guys, Rob from Royal Balls. I've got another video from uh, ARP Constrictors, uh, cutting of clutch 2. Uh, this clutch is um, Owen's Calico line, which is a really superb line of uh, calico, and um, hopefully there will be uh, one of the hatchlings in there earmarked for me uh, this season. I'd like to get his calico line into my collection. Um, just before we go down and look at the clutch of eggs, a um, little bit about the protocol that Owen uses for incubation. Um, the eggs stay as they lay. Um, he puts them into the incubator in a uh, solid clutch. He does mark them for way up, but he leaves them all stuck together. Um, in nature, uh, snake eggs, the embryo attaches to the side wall of the egg, and the eggs naturally stick together to prevent them rolling. After the first 24 hours, um, if the eggs do roll, um, you stand the chance of uh, internal damage to the egg. You can tear the internal membrane and uh, break uh, blood vessels and the embryo can also drown if the uh, egg rolls. So the eggs need to stay uh, once they've been, uh, once the embryo is attached to the, the egg, they need to stay exactly as they, as they sit and avoid rolling. So he uses a minimal interference technique. He simply takes the uh, mother snake off the eggs takes the clump of eggs and sticks it in the incubator just as they lay. A uh, little bit of research on the internet suggests that there is absolutely no difference in the hatch rate uh, between uh, ro turning the eggs with the embryo up, as some people like to do, and uh, not doing so. And Owen doesn't, and his hatch rates are excellent. You'll also see um, from the clutch that one of the eggs has gone bad, and it is uh, an egg that's uh, attached to the clutch and it hasn't affected the other eggs. I know some people like to separate the eggs in the incubator so that if one egg does go bad, it's easy to take out. Um, but um, again, Owen doesn't touch them. From the time they go in the incubator to the time he cuts the eggs just prior to uh, their expected hatched egg, um, they're left exactly as they are. And the, the bad egg you can see on this clutch has not uh, affected any of the other eggs. So. Um, different strokes for different uh, folks, um, lots of different ways to incubate and all seem to be successful, uh, but I, I do think the key to successful incubation is not to mess with the eggs. Once they go in the incubator, don't touch them. Just leave them for 60 days, don't mess with them, and uh, um, the hatch rate seems to be, uh, seems to be pretty good. Um, this is my uh, banana black pastel that I'm holding here. He's a male, um, so a male maker as well. He'll be joining the breeding team next year. I do have some um, projects for him to, to work into. Um, I'd like to extract the black pastel from him more than the banana because I do have another banana male in my collection. Um, this one has lots of freckles and my other male doesn't have freckles. Okay guys, so um, let's go down to ARP and cut the clutch. Okay, so while we're here, um, we have clutch number two that we can cut. So if we take a look at the clutch there, you can see there is one bad egg, but it hasn't spoiled any of the other clutch. So, Owen, do you want to tell us, before we cut the clutch, a little bit about what this is? Yeah, so the pairing is between a female lesser bee. Well, that's my quotes, all my numbers, and nobody else understands that. So it's a lesser bee female to a pastel calico male. So let's hope he eats, if he eats some nice ones. Oh, yeah. there could be a snake in here that I want. Yeah. Well, there's a snake in here that everybody wants. <laughs> I have a long waiting list for my calicos. I'll just start from the bottom one. Uh, maybe this, this is the hardest to cut. So the eggs are still very difficult to separate now. Yeah. It's a bit tricky to cut this way because yeah. they separate the eggs sometimes. Well, it's barely up, can't really see anything. Actually, you can see the head. That looks like a bumblebee, actually. Yeah, can you see? That's the head, and it's just barely up all the other way. Yeah, let me see if I can just zoom in a little bit. Yeah, it's not showing up too well, but you can see. Yeah. 
So next one is cut this. And why do you like to cut the eggs? Tell us why you like to cut the eggs. Number one, to get a look at what's inside yeah. because you can't help it's yourself. That's the main, main reason we cut it. Uh, second thing is because in the wild, the survival rate is not 100%, they don't really hatch 100%. So the weaker snakes will always drown. So we just give them a slightly better chance of hatching up. So usually we, we cut all of them and the first one pips to just make sure none of them just drown inside there. But most of the time we just cut because we have EGNs. I think that is a... Uh, that looks like it's got calico in it. I think that's a lesser spider something. Again, you'll know better when they come out the egg. Mm -hmm. This is the exciting part. Yeah, I think that's a, that's, a, that's a queen bee. That's a queen bee at the least. That's definitely pestilacic and uh, spider in there. Okay. Okay. Nice cut on that one. It's a uh, lesser pestle. There's no calico in there, I think. I'll cut some major wings, but it's okay because we're right about to hatch, so it's fine. Okay. So you can see how the blood veins are actually detaching from the wall of the egg there, which is what happens when they're about ready to, to hatch. Well, it's just white because it's just the belly. <laughs> That's, that's a perfect cut, you see there's no wing cut and the yes, whole thing is really yeah. detached. Because, but when we are this close to hatching, it's, it's fine. They're supposed to hatch in a day or two. We really won't mess them that much, but... I believe that could be a calico something, yep. Yep, I think that's a calico something. That one's mine then. Oh, you want a calico bumblebee, right? You're right. <laughs> Just like the... the we, we can be greedy this season, because <laughs> I, I have quite a number of clutches on this. Uh, yeah, it looks like a normal actually. That might be a normal. How did I even hit a normal in this? Yeah, what are the odds? Yeah. Great stuff. A normal, well done. I like them all. Any baby snake is just awesome. That's another one that's just showing the belly. Mm. That's a bumblebee. Yes, so see that. Oh, that's that might obvious. be a lesser bee. No, that's, I think that's a lesser bee. It's a bit too clean to be bumblebee. Let's cut the last one. I really hope we can hit a queen bee calico actually. Oop. Nope, I think that's a bumblebee. That might be a bumblebee calico. Nope, nope, go in, do in, do in, come up, don't come up, don't breathe too early. Check my app. How many days is it from hatching? It's due in three days. Actually, it's fine. Even if they pip tomorrow, was what? That might be our queen bee calico. That's a noisy bird. Yeah, it's my cause. So we have one, two, three, four with the bee, and. Uh, without the bee. No, we, okay. we still need to wait for them to hatch out to be sure what they are. Yeah, well, we'll get some pics of those when they come out again. Well, you see, Maybe. now we can't even see any, we can't even be sure that any of them have calico. But uh, when they come out, then we'll be sure about it. Cool. Because the calicos just get nicer and nicer with age, you see? Yeah.